You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. As some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Polar Night. So y'all, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right back in, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. Oh, look at that funky beat. We were, we were in a lounge of some sort. A well-stocked bar complete with stools at one... That stood to one end with a comfy-looking sofa nestled against the other, the other wall. On the other side was a large table with chairs set up around them, like a cross between a conference room and dining room. This is the Explorers Club. Pretty neat, eh? Given the nature of this voyage, it almost expected a Spartan, grey and drab utilitarian ship. I guess Sharif realized that, they, that if they were going to be searching the Arctic Ocean, they might as well do it in style. I'll give you guys the full tour, but first you should get settled. The stairs are just on your left through that door there. She finished, she finished a set of keys from her pocket and handed it to me. Once you drop off your stuff, Sheriff wants everyone to gather back here. Got it, thanks. She flashed me another toothy smile before walking up the steps to the upper floor. There was a buzz of chatter and excited conversations from the cabins as I descended the stairs. The corridor for the cabins was a bit less swanky than upstairs. I could see the others through the open cabins, admiring their accommodations for the foreseeable future. A little over halfway down the corridor, I found the door to my cabin, Garrett Reed. I slid the key in and unlocked it. The first thing that struck me was the smell. A piney wood scent. The room seemed a bit bigger than it was thanks to the light painted walls, but the mahogany paneling along the, sep along the separating wall gave it a touch of, touch of class. I had double bed all to myself too. Pretty sweet. In the corner by the door was a small sofa and a coffee table, and much of teapot and cups were already placed. I suddenly realized I was gasping for a cup of tea. More than a cigarette even. I wouldn't call it high class living. For a ship cabin it was pretty nice. Better than a lot of hotel rooms I'd stayed in, certainly. The relieved sigh, I slipped my backpack off and placed it on the bed. My back was matted and hot from my jacket at the weight of the bat, the weight of the pack. It had been fine out in the cold, but now we were in a cozy environment. I was sweating up a storm. I gave myself a sniff. It was hard to trust my nose from a few years of smoking, but I did not, but I detected the unpleasant scent of sweat. I wonder if I have time for a shower. Hey, Garrett, meeting starting. Of course not. Coming. The heavy sigh and hoping I could perhaps fit the apart sit apart from the others until I could wash, made my way back into the corridor, locking my cabin behind me. Pretty nice, huh? It's not bad actually. I wasn't actually I wasn't really sure what to expect. At least we might be able to see some neat stuff before neat stuff during the search. Bodloff, maybe an Aurora. I wouldn't count on seeing much. This this time of year we'll probably get polar night. Uh polar night? And basically when night lasts longer than twenty-four hours. Besides, this isn't a sightseeing tour. We're here for a reason. Sounds weird. Ugh, and after I bought my, brought my camera with me. A pang of irritation hit me at his whining. What did he think this was, a fucking holiday? Anyway, let's get going. I for one want to see what Sheriff has to say about everything. Say for himself. Yeah, same. The three of us made our way up and back towards the lounge. As we re-entered the lounge, June was behind the, door, behind the bar stocking some bottles. She gave us a cheeky grin as we passed. Sitting on the nearby sofa was Joseph. He had a cup of cup of coffee before him, and he was watching the gathering in the conference room with interest. Everyone was gathered in the adjoining dining room, seated around the large table with sheriff at set, with sheriff sat at the end, sat at the head. There was a smattering of conversation when we arrived. Sheriff watched us with an intense look. His fingers steepled before him. Even with his stony expression, I could sense the irritation from him. I took a free seat beside the tigress at the top of the table on sheriff's right. Gail sat on the other side of her. Stefan sat beside Aaron, who gave him a courteous smile and nod. Now that we are all present. He gave, he gave me, Stefan, and Gail appointed looks. It felt like a scolded student being given, being given a talking to by my teacher. I am sure you are all curious about the specifics of this expedition. Most of all, the new information about the location of the Aaron. The room was so quiet, I could swear I could hear my own heartbeat. As such, I will. One moment, Sheriff. All eyes went to Gail. Why don't we all introduce ourselves? I don't know about anyone else here, but I've never met any of you before today. It's hard to tell Sheriff's thoughts from his expression. He seemed to have a permanent look of irritated boredom. Before he could say anything, though, the stag staggling forward onto the table. Alrighty. Oh, uh, great. I'll go first. Rufus Dixon, uh, pleased to meet y'all. My sister Hannah was the first officer. His baritone voice had a bit of a southern U.S. drawl to it. Despite his size, he radiated a warm friendliness. Pleased to meet you. All eyes moved to the next person along. With a nervous cough, Aaron spoke softly, barely a mumble. Well, I'm Aaron Marsh. Carrie, my big sister, was a navigator. 
Stefan, who had been fidgeting more and more, finally burst. Come on, what was with was? They're still out there. Elias turned to him. Even Tabby stopped fiddling with her phone to stare. Sheriff pointed and point, pinched the bridge of his muzzle in exasperation. Without skipping a beat, he leaned forward, gazing from face to face as if daring anyone to contradict him. Stefan Gulabev, and my big bro is alive, and I'm going to bring him home. Only the soft sounds of June stalking the bar could be heard in the silence that it followed. And even that halted when June realized the clinking was drawing everyone's attention. Everyone now turned to look at the, look at Tabby, who was still staring at Stefan. When she sensed all eyes on her, she immediately leaned back in her seat with a disinterested expression. Tabby, I guess it's me. Tabby, Mom was the ship's doctor. At this, she turned to glare at Gale. And for the record, this was all Gale's idea. I don't want to be here, so the sooner this is over, the better. The look between them could have killed. I suspected Gale was regretting this introduction, this introduction business. Well, um, I'm Gale. Gale Waters. Mom was... She called herself, returning the contentious look Tabby gave her. Is Dr. Emma Waters, as Tabby said, who is my sister in, my, in case it wasn't obvious. The two stared each other down. Even Sheriff glanced between the two as though half expected one of them to lunge for the other. Thankfully, the tiger was cleared her throat, drawing everyone's attention. She wore a slightly smug expression, arms folded, her piercing eyes moving over each speaker in turn. I'm Dana. Captain McGregor was my father. And assuming Sheriff isn't blowing smoke up our collective asses and we find the Iran, help prove that he wasn't responsible for her disappearance. She shot Sheriff a sharp look. Unfortunately for her, he looked utterly unmoved. In fact, he looked bored, if anything. That was what I noticed everyone had turned their gazes to me. I felt my skin burn and my pulse quicken. I hated, I hated being the center of attention. I turned my face so my scarred eye was harder to see, as pointless as it was. I'm, um, I'm Garrett. Uh, Garrett Reed. Pleased to meet you. I cringed at the quavering in my voice. My, um, my older brother was Connor Reed, a mechanic. When I saw Stefan and Gale shift uncomfortably, I realized I said was. Their sad expressions triggered a twinge of guilt and I couldn't meet their eyes. But the truth was, it's what I believed. This was a search, not a rescue. The only sheriff remained. He stayed silent, his hands still steepled before him as he stared at nothing in particular. Well? Very well. I am Professor Sheriff Abdi. You may call me Sheriff. As And as my letter explained, I provided most of this funding for this expedition. A professor? What's your field? Anthropology. As for who I knew aboard, again, my letter made it clear. So he had a southern accent. Okay. Could you remind me? It was a while ago. Hmm. Could have sworn I saw a flicker of emotion through his stony expression. Professor Hagen. No way! You knew the guy who in charge? I will explain if you could be quiet for a moment. Stefan looked like... Stefan looked like he wanted to say to say more, but a barrage of annoyed looks silenced him. Professor Hagen was my supervisor for my PhD. He was also a close friend. That is why I am here. That is as much as I am willing to say on the topic. Now, if we are all finished getting to know each other. Second y'all? Alright. Shot Gale a piercing look, making her shift uncomfortably in her seat. No one else looked interested in interrupting. I understand you all may be skeptical. Nearly two years worth of concerted search efforts for nothing. We have all put a great deal of money into this expedition. I can assure you I have planned the most efficient search pattern that will make the best use of our available time. How long will this search last, then? Your letter didn't specify that. Two weeks. Tabby audibly groaned. Great. Great, a fortnight on this tub and we don't even get to sightsee. But the inquiry searched the area around the... But the inquiry searched the area around the Iran's last radioed position. No traces ever found. True. Radio contact seemed, seemed normal at the time, but when you examine the GPS... Wait a minute! Elias turned to Stefan, who had an intense look in his eye. Radio contact was not normal. They reported someone had been killed and their instruments were behaving, behaving strangely. I remember the recordings for the inquiry. The captain mentioned the crew was having discipline issues. So what? We've been over this. Seems that they got lost. Aaron visibly, Aaron visibly seethed her insinuation, while Rufus put his hands on the table, barely containing his anger. My sister would never have allowed anyone on the crew to endanger the sh <clears throat> Southern accent, southern accent. My sister would never have allowed anyone on the crew to endanger the ship. Not in a million years. There's no way Carrie would have gotten them lost, I guarantee it. Mom mentioned something about... Everyone started raising their voices at once, each protesting to the point where I couldn't make out what any part of one person was saying. Enough! 
His normally, fo his normally formal, quiet voice boomed out, startling everyone. He was stood, hands placed flat on the table as he stared down at us. We all fell silent. Even June, all the way over at the bar, had frozen in the middle of placing a bottle on the shelf, seemingly afraid of clinking the glass. I am not here to, re to relitigate the inquiry. I don't care about blame. If you wish to repeat the same arguments of the last two years, do so on your own time and do not waste mine. Is that... Is this acceptable? It wasn't a question so much as a dare. His sapphire blue eyes scanned each of, each of us in turn as if challenging us to speak up. Even Rufus looked really uncomfortable under his unrelenting gaze. Splendid. Ah, sorry, Al. And just like that, he sat back down. Hands steepled once more as if nothing had happened. A few uncertain looks were exchanged across the table. As has been pointed out, the Iran's last radio report placed it on his planned route, however. He pulled a large roll of paper from the bag, from the bag beside him and rolled it over the table. It was a map of the Arctic region, with Svalbard near the bottom left. Long year had been... Long Yerbian was marked as a, with a black cross, with a dotted line leaving to the north, bringing it toward Greenland. I've seen this so many times before. Countless reconstructions, simulations, the path of the, of the Iran's voyage. But there was a second red dotted line and a series of red X marks with one large blue X. I have good reason to believe that Professor Hagen, Hagen may have used a different route. We all exchanged confused looks. Different how? And how do you, and how do you know? Because he left behind an itinerary for a second route for the expedition in case they hit multi-year ice. The Iran was rated for first-year ice. What's the difference? Which one is Iran? Which one? Aaron. Okay, Aaron is the bunny, I think. First-year ice? First-year... First-year ice is ice that's less than a year old. Multi-year ice is potentially several years old. Multi-year is thicker than first-year. Enough that ships don't need to be rated specifically for it. It can be harder than concrete. More than enough, to, more than enough to hole a hole, to hole a hole. Hagen understood that if the chosen route was untenable, it required an alternative. However, the second route was quickly irrelevant because an ice report suggested it would not be a problem. Wait, wait. You're saying you found some note from Hagen saying, "Hey, if you don't find us, we're some find where we're supposed to be. Try here." Are we supposed to believe that? Hagen left the itinerary at the University of Bergen's of Bergen's. Bergen's Jerkness Center for climate research as a routine procedure when planning the expedition. But that alone wouldn't be enough. Well, the last radio report put, the, put them here. He tapped, an, he tapped an X marked on the original, official route close to Greenland. Several, G, several GPS signals placed them nowhere near the official route. This is still really shaky. Sounds really shaky. The inquiry said their GPS was faulty. They could have been lost. I'm not finished. The inquiry noted that the, while their most GPS data placed them on the official route, several... Odd GPS signals placed the Iran hundreds of miles away from its supposed true position. These were assumed to be errors. But if you match those coordinates... His finger tapped the red X's on the map. We all peered closely at the red dotted line, and sure enough, the marks tracked almost perfectly along the new red path. I believe the Iran chose to use the second route for some reason. It might have been a last minute change due to changing weather or ice. It was a cover story. The first route was a trick. The second was the true course all along. Elias glanced over to the possum. He had an intense look in his eyes. He stared at the chart. Sheriff gave him a withering look. Please do not jump to conclusions. We, do not, we don't know why the radio report differs from these GPS coordinates, or why these odd coordinates exist in the first place. Maybe they were lost. Aram toted and folded his arms. Or their equipment was faulty. Regardless, the fact these inexplicable coordinates match this second route perfectly is simply too much of a coincidence. If you had this new information, why not bring it to the authorities? Why get us to fund this trip? I. Did. I did. Okay. I. Did. He hits the words with a ripple of anger beneath his otherwise cool exterior. The authorities do not feel it's sufficient to organize a new search. This is my last option. Believe me, if I'd had the means to fund this, that it did not require expending so much of my own money, or yours, I'd have taken it. The vast majority of the funds for this trip was hiring the sonar apparatus we'll be using to search the seabed once we arrive at our search station, search location. The contributions helped with chartering this vessel. But I believe I've said enough. We'll depart in an hour. If you were having second thoughts, now is the time. It will be approximately three days before we reach the first search area. While you are free to make use of the ship's facilities and hospitality, Please remember you are here for a reason. But for now, are there any more questions? 
There was a tense silence. Sheriff scanned each of us with that piercing gaze. Very well. If you all don't mind, I need to discuss the journey with the captain. And with that, he rolled up the chart, scooped up his notebook, and strode up the stairs leading to the upper deck. For a while, no one moved as we all, as we all seemed to be absorbed in our own thoughts. Everyone looked somber. Despite Sheriff's explanation, I had so many questions I didn't even know where to begin. Sheriff finding this new itinerary was bringing up a lot of questions. As bizarre as Stefan's beliefs were, I couldn't help but agree with him that something was fell very off. We were shaken from our thoughts when Tabby finally pushed back from the table noisily and walked suddenly towards the lounge. Gail quickly followed. When is Tabby? Yes, yeah, Tabby, I believe. Glad to see we're all friends now. Tabby! Despite her snark, it did at least seem to drain some of the tension. Rufus stretched, loudly, crack, loudly cracking his knuckles and popping his shoulders. Ah, got it. I'm getting all these different accents. I'm getting uh, kind of tongue twisted, tongue tied. Can use a drink. Well, came this far. I'm in. Same. If we find the Aram, at least I can know for sure. We'll find it and we'll bring them home. You'll see. Evening, guys. <laughs> Ow! Oh my god, what the hell? What the hell, sinuses? Jesus, I just finished the video. Alright, y'all, thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks, or tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye